more than a quarter of a million miles away. And yet Earth's nearest neighbor in space. Man has fed his imagination on it since the beginnings. Now he has set foot there, leaving his tracks in the lunar quiet. And with him, Tang, the orange-flavored instant breakfast drink with more vitamin C than orange juice. Nutritious Tang for spacemen and Earth families. Or on the flight of Apollo 14 after station identification. Flash today at 1. Let's drink for breakfast tomorrow. And by Bufferin, so fast to your headache, so gentle on your stomach. On the surface there is Al Shepard. Ed Mitchell has already re-entered the land. They're now operating the pulley to return some of the uh, treasures they have gathered on the surface of the moon to the land before Shepard goes back on board and they prepare for the liftoff, which will be in less than six hours from now. They're wrapping up their his second uh, and most exciting EVA. You see Shepard moving around there at the base of the LEM. And they've sent the sample containers, the rock boxes, soil containers, film magazines all up, being sure they don't leave any behind. One film magazine was inadvertently left behind in an earlier flight. ALSEP, the Apollo Lunar Scientific Experiment Package antenna that Shepard had to realign. Uh, he did realign it, and Houston's getting good signal. That's all straightened out. Left behind the lunar surface is a lot of junk, uh, including the MET, the modular equipment transporter, which we can see in the foreground. Okay, I'll bring it down. All right. You can see Shepard working the conveyor belt there. The uh, transfer of materials via conveyor belt is continuing. they finish transferring these film magazines and sample containers, a lot of junk will be thrown out and left behind. It's not really junk. There's no practical way of bringing it back. But the backpacks themselves, which are quite bulky, the plisses, or portable life support system backpacks, the lunar overshoes and a lot of other equipment uh, will be jettisoned. They'll open the hatch from 44 minutes after terminating the ZVA and uh, just uh, throw the stuff out on the moon surface. Okay, you can take the train out if you like. Okay. There she comes. You pointed out the reason for that, Jules, of course, is you just don't have the capability to bring it back from the standpoint of propulsion to lift it off the moon. Right, you'd, and for some of that, you'd be trading off uh, rock samples, lunar samples, if you did take it back. And, uh, and uh, many of these items are stored in the LEM on the way to the moon, and of course, there's not room in the command module to re-enter the atmosphere with them anyway, so there's really no alternative. Okay, it's all yours. Okay, I got it. You want to check the train line down for it, come on. Yep. Four hours and 27 minutes into the second moonwalk, it's about to end. Okay, here it comes. 
Much of this sort of thing has been left behind in previous missions, with the exception of the Met, of course, but nobody ever left golf balls behind before. Adapts readily, doesn't he? Okay, yes, Trouble we used to predict with 16G, and now you see them very much at home. Roger L, yeah. You and Ed did a great job. Don't think I could have done any better myself. That's debatable, isn't it, Fredo? Well, I guess not now, Ed. Al Shepard uh, preparing to start up the ladder now. Moving forward. And, uh... Okay, the dust is not off. And uh, with this closeout, Al Shepard, uh, not age uh, two score in seven years, becomes the undisputed leader in time spent walking, uh, working on the moon. More than nine hours. Uh, Running a close second uh, is, is his partner, Ed Mitchell. How'd you like one more bag of rocks? Okay, if you'll pick one LE3. Okay. Okay, it's me. Wait a minute, let me get a touch back to it. You know, some future lunar explorers, Frank, might be able to rationalize a way or come up with an explanation for the limb or some of the tools, but what would they ever think of the golf balls? Yes. Take this while you're at it before you come in. Well, you think man will ever stop playing oh, golf? I, I doubt it. They'll probably just wonder uh, we'll be inside who was there. Momentarily. Before Al uh, Shepard goes up, uh, we'll pause for just a moment. We'll have more on Apollo 14 after this word from Buffett. Surface. And Al Shepard has gone up a ladder inside the limb, and we think the hatch is either has just closed or is about to. It looks like there's a piece of Velcro laying right in the door. Can you reach it before I pull the door closed? That's it. It's one of those off the bat. Okay. Hatch about to be closed and ground elapsed time 136 hours 20 minutes. Shepard uh, moving inside now. That's a more door than that, Ed. No, just a minute. Wait a minute, back out. I've got to turn. Scarcely room to breathe or move about with the backpack on until you get it off and then. 136 hours, 21 minutes. Mitchell reporting uh, the hatch door is closed. And they, and they still have five hours, 45 minutes more on the moon, cleaning up getting a, a decent meal in and getting ready for lunar liftoff at 1.30. 1, 1.47. 1 1.47. We go on at 1.30, beg your pardon. Okay, the closed and Pressurize the lens cabin and come off uh, the suit hose and the backpack.
Pressurize the cabin, I believe. They'll be shooting toward a launch window of 30 seconds, which is a rather tight one. I, I think this afternoon at 147 when the for lift off, right? For lift off. That, of course, because uh, they have to rendezvous precisely with Stu Russo in the command module as he passes overhead and leads them, and they rendezvous and dock. Yes, he's about to come into his own on this mission, isn't he? Yes. It's very, very important, uh, his function this afternoon. We'll have more on Apollo 14 right after this message. The astronauts, both astronauts, Ed Mitchell and Alan Shepard, have now re-entered Antares, which has been on the moon for more than 27 hours, actually, uh, not 27 hours, 29 minutes. And uh, they are now repressurizing the cabin. They will be taking off from the moon this afternoon at uh, 1.47 is the scheduled time for liftoff in order to rejoin the command module with Stu Rusa aboard, who he, of course, has been orbiting the moon all this time. I think uh, perhaps we've heard less from the uh, command module pilot on this mission than from any previous uh, lunar mission. But he's there, and uh, Houston's been keeping track of him, and he's been checking in from time to time. So there's the lunar way. It's too bad that the camera can't be operative at the moment they blast off so that we could at least see the first ignition. I think we should do that. We also should have a portable camera so that we can uh, go with them on the traverses. I think that would have The lunar too. rover will, will have a portable camera. Unfortunately, it won't show you picture as the lunar rover is rolling, only when it stops. But, but it will take us along on the traverses. Well, it would have brought us... Uh, pictures today of uh, at least the boulder field yes, there near right, the edge of Cone right. Crater. Sure, that would have been great. That was about four hours and 29 minutes at second moonwalk by my calculation. Mission Control will come up with some number around yeah. that, I guess. Even though we uh, we didn't have the television, we'll have uh, we'll have film of the uh, of the other area that they explored up there near uh, Cone Crater. And also we should have some fast and, uh, fantastic still photographs. Just watching those, uh, them weave their way in between those 40-foot and 20-foot boulders yeah, would be pretty huge spectacular. Things. Huge uh, things. And up the steep incline toward the cone of rim that they didn't quite, the rim of cone they didn't quite reach. Gee, they tried, didn't they? Yes, uh, and uh, Ed Mitchell certainly wanted to go. Uh, what was his quote at one point? Uh, Gee whiz, we've got to get to uh, the cone crater. He said, we'll miss the whole point of it. Another time I think he said, well, let's go ahead and give it a whirl. Yes. He was very eager to get up yes. there. And uh, they did have to adjust their priorities. I remember at about that same time, uh, Frank and Jules, uh, Al Shepard remarked that uh, they were spending too much time traveling and not enough time collecting samples and uh, photographing the various uh, rocks and so forth. Yeah. But nevertheless, Frank, uh, this flight will, will go down on the history books. Uh, it wasn't really supposed to. I mean, it was the first flight to the lunar highlands to older terrain to mountainous plateau country, if you will, but uh, more than nine hours of EVA that went spectacularly well. A pinpoint landing that even c a computer uh, is unlikely to ever, e ever equal again, I think, within 60 feet of the target. That's fairly fantastic shooting, and uh, most of all, precision performances by Al Shepard, who many people didn't think had it in him at his age uh, or with his personality, and Ed Mitchell, a brilliant young, uh, really almost a scientist astronaut, though he's an astronaut astronaut, who has his doctorate in aeronautics from MIT. Brilliant performances uh, that sort of turn the corner from the earlier flights that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin flew, and Pete Conrad and Al Bean flew on Apollo 11 and Apollo 12, that turn the corner into what NASA calls the J missions, where the scientific goals get more emphasis. And we'll see more of that on the lunar rover flights that begin with Apollo 15 and extend forward into Apollo 16 and then the end of the Apollo series with Apollo 17 when the first scientist astronaut Jack Schmidt will get his chance to show what a trained geologist can do on the moon. Well we had to prove, uh, we had to establish first of all that we could get there yes. and get back. So I think it's a been a very, very rational program and I think that uh, we've anticipated the need for the rover. The day we saw that certainly the rover uh, would have extended man's capability and uh, 
In the final analysis, uh, I think uh, you have a great plus if you can put man and his intelligence uh, on, on the moon. Well, certainly the, uh, the observations that they were able to make, you know, the narrative that they described for us today told us a great deal, even though we didn't see the pictures. Uh, pictures that they will undoubtedly bring back of uh, various phenomena they observed. But uh, man's ability to stand up there and say, I see this, I see that, that certainly is invaluable. And uh, I don't know, maybe a lunacard or uh, some sort of a manless machine could perhaps perform the same function, but it wouldn't be as good a show, I'll tell you.